Your next career move could be the one you never imagined. Web3 Nomads. Everywhere jobs for anywhere people. All right. Welcome back. Another episode of uh, the Epic Closure. We're just going to go through some shit that's been going on through the markets. So um, we're going to cover some Blair stuff. We're going to cover some Coinbase L2 stuff. We're going to cover some alts that are continuing to grind upwards despite the rest of the market looking like dog shit. Uh, yeah, and lots of other shit in between. But gents, how are you doing? Good. Really, enjo- really, enjo- really enjoyed the bull market whilst it lasted. I mean, there are still some that are grinding up, but I think for the most part, just looking across the board on my right screen here, yes, sir, it does look like dog shit. I feel fine, thankfully. It's good to be here. I tell, I tell you what, Jedi, I am so happy you're back. Like when you were happy in the bull one, like posting in Discord, whoa, look at this, boof, boof, boof. It was weird. Like the grumpy fucker you are, it's so good to have you back. Now we're in a bear market. I love it. I love it, mate. I missed it. It was fun. I mean, I love I love running commentaries and kind of like being bullish on something and then like two minutes later being very bearish about it, getting <laughs> getting a hard time from from mates and but it's all in good spirits and at the end of the day it's dude, it's lovely when things go up, isn't it? And making a bit of money and it was great. Ah, this yeah. post. I could trust you to bring this post up. This was a great post, by the way. Great thread. Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it didn't actually take that long. A lot of them were on the, on the watch list anyway, so it was quite interesting to just kind of dig them out and see. What's really interesting is is where you see a lot of the engagement come from. Uh, so Trident did extremely well. Um, there was a few others. Like just sk- skimming through the thread, we'll leave it in the description. Like IPOR, um, always kind of good signs that. Whoa, is- Project Eleven. What's that, bro? What's that? Oh. Oh, that's the most fast, most interesting one on the on the menu, I suppose. Um, I can't believe you did yeah. an evaluation on that. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to get the clicks, Dan. How far away are we from four thousand? Just to tell we everyone are. who's listening, if you're not subscribing already, we do all this shit for free. So please just go and do us a favor. It takes literally two clicks. Um, but yeah, how, how many is the newsletter off? We are, as of 8.20 a.m. UK time, we are 100 subscribers away from 4,000 total subscribers. As for just this month alone, we are nine subscribers away from 1,000 subs in less than 30 days because February has less than 30 days. That, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) is a feat in itself. Nice. So 33% increase in in a month, which is good. Hmm. Moving in the right direction. 40,000, then 400,000 next. So, um, but yeah, if you could do us a favor, if you're listening, it's it's literally in the description. It, it mean uh, an awful lot to all of us three on here to just go and subscribe. And while you're at it, if you're watching the YouTube as well, you can just go and hit subscribe on that. As I say, this is all for free. We don't charge for a newsletter. We don't charge for any of this shit. So um, all you have to do is just press the button. So now that you've done that, uh, we'll start getting into some juicy 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 content um i suppose uh we'll get into like a couple of picks from the newsletter so the last one that got released yesterday was um uh, based around nft marketplaces the blur open sea and then there was a little bit of um getting into coinbase and the new release of the optimistic roll-up built using the optimism stack but dan what what's the kind of premise just uh don't need to kind of read it word for word but just so people can get an understanding of what they'll be kind of reading through uh basically the the tldr is blur is absolutely smoking open sea pseudo swap is down only despite being super good tech and then there is a little gem um ironically called gem which is going to be one of the has potential to be one of the best NFT aggregators as it's going to aggregate over 150 different uh, marketplaces into one. And they look like they're targeting uh, DGEN traders and sweepers. So it's for the people, for the people who are getting absolutely wrecked on blur as like the board, a yacht club whales uh, messing around with the prices up and down and all the bids, which you can see from their wallets, if you follow it. Um, and I think they'll be the ones to capture that kind of market. Gem is also was also bought out last year um, by OpenSea, so I think this is also going to be 
Open Seas Redemption arc. Um, but yeah, that, that'd be quite interesting. We go into a little bit of detail on Coinbase, but this was released right, ju- literally about 20 minutes before Coinbase dropped. And then I had the pleasure <laughs> of spending an hour and a half with um, Bankless, watching them shill their bags with, uh, the guy, with Jesse from, from Coinbase. So that was a lovely evening. I'm just glad it wasn't Friday night. Yeah. You, so, you know what, Dan? You know what, Dan? Every dog has his day and we'll get ours. So don't worry about it, Dan. Take the virtual hug. There we go. Everything will be fine, sir. <laughs> so what's, I suppose, the biggest news, as Dan was saying, in the last 24 hours is um, Coinbase, which is could be perceived as a, like a Web2 finance company, have now started making inroads and they're releasing um, their own layer two built on top of Ethereum using the Optimism stack. What's the kind of sentiment from, I suppose, go with Jerry first? I mean, I'm not a fan of that platform, um, never have been, but you know, kind of putting that aside, they've they've really hit the nail on the head with this one. I think uh, they are essentially positioning themselves to be a major player in the space. I mean, they've just been down only since listing. I mean, they were the top in, you know, what was the last bull run. Um, I'm sure there's an argument as to, you know, like whether the bull run from last year is over or not, but that's another discussion. But I think they were the top. Now they're coming back with a response. Obviously, they've used optimism as their, their go-to, which is huge. I mean, it's huge for optimism. That must have been a hell of a deal. Uh, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to kind of like, you know, listen in on, on what that deal involved. Um, I'm sure the SEC will check in on that at some point in time. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. But I think Coinbase is playing the game <laughs> probably at the highest and the most proficient level right now, and you've got to take your hat off to them. Like I said, not a fan, but I take my hat off. Well done, Coinbase you have definitely elevated yourself to be a major player. And it's, I think right now, if you are bearish on Coinbase, I think you've missed the point of how this space works. Any thoughts, Dan? Uh, yeah, I think they've literally just gone from, this is their like zero to one moment where they've got like a bajillion users already. Um, mm. And like they can literally just X fur like, I don't know, let's say they got a million users, they can literally expert a million users from being like exchange users to actual on-chain users using their wallet and their tech. So it, the, the battle to onboard 1 million um, more users into the wonderful world of crypto, I think has just been won um, by Coinbase. Um, so now it'll be the, the battle of the bald heads, uh, Brian versus CZ. Which one gets shinier? <laughs> Whoa, there we go. Oh, too bright. Put it away. <laughs> so, um, so my kind of take on it, and just to just to refresh those numbers, you just said Coinbase has got a hundred and around one hundred and one million verified subscribers. So, who have actually wow. went through KYC and, and that process? Wow. The whole DeFi space has probably got around a million, probably sub sub like just under a million um, active users. So, it's several orders of magnitude higher and even if they can capture two or three percent of their user base and have the kind of onboarding that is removing the whole idea of kind of account abstraction where you kind of take away the idea that you're actually using crypto um if they can capture one or two percent then they're gonna two or three x the DeFi space so in my opinion great I don't, I'll get into kind of my idea of why they've chose optimum, optimism in a minute. I think building on top of Ethereum, definitely a good thing. It feels like the US's response to Binance Smart Chain, um, in a sense. So Binance, big exchange, they've got their own, um, they've got their own chain now. Coinbase, biggest exchange in the US, I think, is, um, you're going to have their own kind of place in the market. I think it will be good for DeFi products and projects that want clarity and regulation and all that kind of stuff that comes alongside being associated with Coinbase. But um, I think their idea of 
of what will be built on the chain is going to be completely different to what actually will be built on the chain. I think they want to, like, from, from listening to them on Empire, they were kind of saying they just want to kind of focus on products that people actually want to use. I think they're going to quickly realize people want to gamble and people want to just be complete degenerates regardless. And they're going to just chase all the money. And they've kind of got these bros tinted glasses on of what they think like the whole could film web three space to be. So I think we'll get a shock there. Um, I think it's a great power move. I think a lot of people had written off Coinbase, myself included last year. This is a good step in the right direction. I would be a bit concerned if you were using a large amount of capital on the chain and someone comes in and says, look, you better, you better put that blacklist on that wallet right now. That's a bit of a concern. I don't know how it plays out for USDC. I think it's just increased their mode even more, having a kind of native stable coin on a specific chain. Um, and my thoughts around <clears throat> why they've chose to use the Optimism stack, and seen a few people crying about um, why they haven't used Arbitrum and things like that. Um, A16Z, biggest one of the biggest investors in Coinbase, are also one of the biggest investors in Optimism. So. And that's not something to be kind of overlooked, in my opinion. Like the two press releases, Coinbase's $5 billion bonanza is Exhibit A as A16C doubles down. That was on May, May 25th, 2022. And the whole think piece from Chris Dixon um, on why A16C invested in optimism. So look behind the curtain a little bit. You can kind of see what's actually going on. You could probably have seen this coming as well. Like, if you really actually, like... It's that, it's that age-old thing. If you properly paid attention to some of these clues, this was, like, inevitable. And, like, even in uh, the Optimism chart, when you go back and look at it, you can see that price was going up in, like, a very suspicious way because there technically wasn't really much OP news happening because, like, the, the second part of the airdrop was a bit of, like... was well, basically a bit of a wet fart, really. It didn't didn't really do much bit of dumping but you could probably have put two and two together to see this I don't know what's going on my deck screen but uh yeah, yeah. i know what you mean it's if it, it felt like it was running without any kind of user activity or narrative you know and everyone's but well, that on the weekly looks well it's going to close its all-time high on the weekly I mean, Dan's been saying that it's going to go to four dollars for ages now, you know, and it's kind of like it's exactly what it's doing, isn't it? Look at it; it's going to four dollars. Conservative, conservative first um, blow off top will be to four to about four point two bucks, according to like Fibonacci lines, depending on how and where you draw them. Uh, that's at like the one point six uh, one eight zone. So. <laughs> So six six hundred and sixty seven million market cap at the moment. Which realistically, what is Binance's uh, market cap at the moment? I mean, uh, BSC Smart Chain. What's that at? Well, it's kind of a bit difficult to compare, really, isn't it? No, can't um, you? Okay, all right. So would that it's not just be a... it's 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 just because BNB was effectively one of the top five tokens prior to okay. finance smart chain even being a thing. And I suppose there's a lot of different connotations and use cases of BNB as opposed to optimism, which doesn't even get used for gas. Gotcha. But um six yeah, is six bill is six bill like a, a like six billion, is that too much? I'd say in this market I'd say so. But be interesting, okay. um I was looking at Looking at stablecoin inflows to optimism, and obviously you just want to track USDC because the rest are effectively redundant at this point in time. Um, but yeah, we've had five percent uptick. I'd expect this to increase um, because it's just going to be kind of an echo narrative. If there was going to be a sell the news, I think it would have been yesterday. Um, or a lot of people were caught offside and didn't know this was coming, which I don't really think is the case, given the kind of press releases all kind of coordinated and the YouTube podcasts and things like that all coordinated around the same sort of time. So don't think that news was kind of kept as close to people's chests as physically possible. Um, so yeah, to keep an eye on optimism inflows. Seems like a little uptick over the last week. I'd expect that to increase. Kind of seeing. I don't know why this is doing this on deck screen, yet, but is it broke? I don't know. Um, no, but yeah, even like listing when it first listed on the decks, it just had that massive wick up. It's annoying. 
So now you've got to spend 20 minutes like scrolling in. Good luck. I'm not going to do that. But anyway, if you look at like OP, it's obviously getting it, catching, catching a bit off the back of that. Um, next unlock isn't for like 100 days or something when I was looking earlier on token unlocks. Um, I'll get into a couple more co- like coins that are kind of reverberating off the back of that in a bit. But um, is there any final points on that? If, I think it's net. I think it's really net positive. I'm just kind of a little bit wary of the implications further down the line from a regulatory perspective. But I also kind of respect how Coinbase kind of probably the market leader in actually going head to head and toe to toe with and confront in the SEC on their like overreach. So kind of, I think chat of the week is is Brian Armstrong personally. Yeah, I think this is good. And I think what they're doing is going to, it's going to, they're not maybe like going to avoid regulation, but they're going to like play around it, I think. Um, by like literally taking everybody off the exchange and then putting them on chain. And the fact that they're not going to be doing a token is extremely smart as well. Yeah, completely I think, agree. I think the the real, the, re, the really sound strategy right now are, are, are projects that are, releasing a product that actually works, getting a loyal user base, improving the product, and then doing token launches that actually fulfill a function, whether it's governance, whatever it might be, reward systems. That's the way to do it right now. Uh, If you look at the projects that are setting themselves up for the long term, I think that is probably the only strategy. The whole idea around launching a token and then relying on that token in order to build a product unless you've got your house really in order i think it really lands up catching people off guard um Mm. i don't know why i think i mean i do know why but that's a long thesis and we could probably discuss that for quite a long time but i think in summary coinbase they they essentially elevating what DeFi is i think there is the regulatory there is kind of like are they going to block people's accounts you know if there's anyone who's going to do it it's them based on their record but you know what let's give them a chance see how it plays out um and hopefully it will be something for the benefit of DeFi, which will be really cool yeah and i think a lot of the marketing communications around this around the base launch which they're going to call it is they want to be as completely chain agnostic as physically possible and be a, com- a complete route through to other networks as well so even if it's a kind of land environment for new participants and to try and get them onboarded i think it's net i think it's really net positive um be interesting to see how circles bridge plays into this or if circle are going to just run up like some kind of layer zero competitor or some shit um it's all all interesting stuff isn't it so um i want to there's a little there's a point in the newsletter with regards to kind of nft marketplace and i think it's really important for us just to point out that um so the blur airdrop that you probably missed (laughs) <laughs> oh, you got a few points. Mine was really terrible, but that was only that was only season one. So season two is actually ongoing now. So you can actually in- increase your chances of getting the next round of airdrops, which I think is going to be equally as rewarding. And obviously, the Blair token is going to be um, worth a little bit more than it was at, at launch. So um, the way it works is you've got um, points. So your points uh, are effectively ways of tracking your bids on the platform, your listings and basically general activity. And then you've got a listing loyalty as well. Um, so the, the way it works, if you're completely unfamiliar, it's just basically, uh, I don't know, name a, if we have a look at some Azuki's for a second, you can effectively go into uh, an Azuki. Uh, where is it? Bids. So, for a floor price Azuki, you can effectively then go in and set your price. So um, where am I looking here? Right. Okay. So floor price is 14.94. Like that's a top bid. Uh, and then you can see you've got a size uh, 58 orders totaling 866 ETH. Um, if you're saying I'm not happy with paying 0.94, there's not much of a difference between that. But you could just put in a bid at 14.93. So it's just a basic kind of bid and ask kind of system. Um, but if your bids are in the top one, two, and three, um, even if you, 
this is where it gets a little bit funny and it's a little bit of kind of um liquidity farming liquidity liquidity mining i suppose if you're placing bids in these areas where they're close to the ask price then this completely tallies up on your points and for the next couple of weeks they're going to be double points so problem is if you're setting bids along this range and someone accepts then you're going to buy you're going to be buying the nft effectively so if you wanted to look at lower priced collections and you were trying to kind of strategically place bids where you were racking up points but they weren't getting accepted i think that's the kind of that's the game at the minute um and you know if it's as big as the last one i think it's worth a couple of hours a week just trying to do this and try and learn different strategies around doing that um and even even on the listing side it doesn't say how many points you're going to get per listing nfts but if you are listed on OpenSea or dare I say it, pseudo or XTY2 or Luxrare and things like that. You might as well just, even if you don't want to use the platform full time, just list on here if you're still trying to get a, if you're still trying to get a sale and still trying to kind of earn some of you back from your NFTs. Um, and you can always set your bit, your asks higher than the current bids. And whilst you're actually listing, you're going to be earning Blair points as well, which will increase your likelihood of getting a larger amount of, of Blair tokens on the next airdrop. So this is, um, I think they're going to eat everyone's lunch. I think this will be the main place. Um, I just think it's the same as anything. I think this OpenSea is to Coinbase what um, Blair is to Binance, in my opinion, just like the user ability and how great each platform is. I think these guys know what they're doing. I think they're going to be extremely successful. Um, so it might be worth just kind of trying this out but be aware if you do if you are setting bids close to the ask price to try and earn extra points you might land yourself in a position where you are um, purchasing that nft and i just Any, want to give that, that some context because and it was in a, it was in the newsletter um and somebody was it, it, this was like i feel like this is almost like war between like the board eight yacht club crew because somebody dumped 71 board ape yacht clubs into blur bids that totaled over 9.1 million dollars so somebody got completely dumped on then this is all on twitter as well then another tweet from the person who did it was uh from wrecked mando and he said after a lot of thinking today we decided to utilize current nft liquidity and take profits on our apes and our mutants so basically they managed to go and absolutely wreck somebody um, but they took over 9.1 million profit. And what's really, really interesting with the Blur Air job, if you follow any of the guys who made over seven figures uh, on this air job and you track their wallets, you can actually see um, how they're doing it. So, for example, Mackie Big Brother, he's already, he's just under uh, 600 NFTs bought and sold. And he is just farming the shit out of it. And he got, um, I think, on launch is about like 1.5 uh, million. It's absolutely yes. insane. Do you uh do you guys just wanna riff a second? I've just gotta answer the door. You're on mute, Jerry. Did I in terms of them in terms of them selling off those um those board apps, I mean, is there an indication as to what it is that they paid for them? Did they actually like make a profit on them or is it just essentially like you know well, just I, getting I think, this, go I think this crew has had them for a while so Rhett Mando he's yeah. the founder of Canary Labs uh DGEN's NFTs Rhett guy he's on uh, Rug Radio and Wrecked Radio as well so I think these were these guys have been like long-term collectors uh that from what I've seen on Twitter they're like long-term supporters of like board yeah. apes and this is just a small part of their collection so I think they yeah. saw the opportunity to make <laughs> To make almost ten million in one click, um, mm. <laughs> and took it. Plus the plus the amount of points they're going to get for for the blur yeah. for the blur airdrop will be huge. Yeah, you know the thing is, it's it's comes back to just a topic of conversation and something that I've written, written about in the past is that I think I think it's great that guys are able to play this level of game, and you know we obviously get to to get insight into this whole thing. But what's interesting about it is that, and what I don't like about it is that 
it's it's very like exclusive, right? And um, I suppose that's what markets are. They are very exclusive by their very nature. However, I also get the kind of like the the urge to want to mix it up and change it, you know, and kind of like give the small guys an opportunity to get that breakthrough that they so desperately need so that they can also start playing these games. I mean, obviously not everyone's going to be able to play it, and rightfully so, but at the same time, I believe that, you know, um, protocols like this get the opportunity to empower smaller guys to, you know, make it along the way. And I think that maybe there needs to be a relook at how this point system works, that maybe there needs to be like a distinguishing factor where a smaller guy is looked on, maybe a lottery system, maybe like a, but a lottery system that doesn't just single out one person that might single out 100 people and they land up getting a 10x on what it is that they had on their points. And then they too get an opportunity to kind of like come in with a million points and, you know, get an airdrop of a million blur and kind of like imagine what that would do for the brand, first of all. Secondly, what it would do for the context of DeFi and, you know, decentralized, empowered platform i mean i am a DeFi maxi after all so why not do that as a protocol i mean you're going to just land up looking like a rock star at the end of the day and people are going to land up using your your platform even more because now it's like it doesn't matter if i'm playing with two or three hundred dollars i might land up winning this lottery and you know put myself in line for life-changing money and they can do it it's not difficult they could easily do something like that yeah i mean if you saw like a crew of of people flipping the the smaller nfts because that's what their budget can or well, literally their budget affords that could be an interesting way of, of looking at it rather than having like total volume because that guy would have got like nine million in volume um let's just say you know someone like us is flipping um like you know the, the krakens or whatever it's a, it's a much yeah. smaller price but if we've got a lot more interaction that could be someone's like, okay, cool. These guys are actually doing something. You know, these guys are promoting it. They, they're using it and they're probably like shilling it to their friends. Correct. But I think instead of playing Sorry. their game, you play your own game on it. And you work yeah, out just, what the game is. It will be interesting to see. I mean, you know, like Grant was saying, these guys know what they're doing. They know how this thing works. And it's cool. I mean, it's, I love this. I love the way that NF, the NFT space is just really growing and all these new ideas are coming to the fore and it's, you know, it's just, we need more of this kind of stuff and long may it continue. So, um, Dan, before we get into a couple of smaller projects and like releases and a bit of alpha and things like that, yeah, I've seen you put, you posting a couple of bits this week of, um, What's the current infrastructure player for ordinals, like the Bitcoin NFTs? There's a wallet that's active and a marketplace, I believe. So I don't know if you have. Yeah. So like in, in in last week's stream, I, I obviously like was saying, uh, you know, you're stacking sats, which was like a massive. I, I obviously didn't get bags, I'm an idiot, but that was a massive like stacks is being the the layer 1.5 of bitcoin so if you want in a layer 1.5 on bitcoin or a play that was probably the one and we all know what happened to the price of stacks because you know we obviously called it here first ladies and gentlemen we are now market movers um and i like uh xverse was the wallet that is now makes it really simple to like hold bitcoin hold stacks uh it's really easy to like go and then mint and create ordinals on something called gamma.io. Um, and literally, instead of like faffing around with all these like nodes and like OTC deals and shit like that, on gamma.io, you literally use it like a marketplace. It's got a clean UI. It's got, um, you can literally do it in, in four clicks. You're there. It's so simple. Nice. And if you if you, scroll, is, uh... if you scroll down a little bit, I think there was a couple of like interesting collections that are there. Or if you go to uh, Minton now, uh, where's that? Oh, live auctions. <laughs> yeah, some of them pretty. Yeah, good, like, there, there's some just there's some wicked ones. Like there's a there's a very interesting um, one called like Crypto Cox, 
which is basically like <laughs> a really massive muscular uh, cock, um, which has got like massive biceps as well. It's, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. But maybe we'll get pulled down off YouTube. We've put that on. Um, right. So a bit of uh, what I've been looking at this week. So picked some of these two of the barons <laughs> NFTs up. So these are from the Baradrome project. Uh, but that doesn't exist, gonna... does it? <laughs> yeah, so these are going to be the... Uh, they seem like the most active project that is getting built on Barachain. Um Obviously, Baratrain is not live yet, so they chose to list the NFTs on Arbitrum. And what they did do, which I thought was great, because it was about time these guys got some much needed love was uh, they launched through Gumball. So Gumball protocol is basically a place where you can mint your NFT collection. But to actually do that, people need to buy your, um, buy an associated token with that as well. So they had like this D D R O M or drum token, um, which you had to purchase and then use that to purchase the NFTs. And then what that does, it's the ETH that you purchase, use to purchase it. Um, it starts some kind of initial liquidity off the back of that. So you can actually trade in now. So really cool. It flew under the radar. These went up to one ETH. I think I was minting at 0. Uh, no, they went up to 0. 0.1 ETH. And I think the mint price was 0. 0.011. So good returns. Wish I'd bought a shitload more. Um, bought a load. Got really lazy. Should have bought more. But yeah, bringing in some decent volume as well. So yeah. Um, if this is some kind of, like, as we know how Barrachain's played out, if the NFTs have anything to do with it, I think the Barrachain guys will have something up their sleeve to this. So, and they're still pretty, pretty low price. So, um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, the Trident roadmap has been released. These guys look like they've just been taking a lot of acid and creating protocols, which was great. Um, they've got a way to swap. So, is this separate? So, when we talk about LSDs, liquid staking derivatives, is this. <laughs> Is they related or they're unrelated? What's going on here? Completely unrelated. Okay, just just checking. I got a bit confused there. Thanks, thanks for clearing that. Up. It's, right. it's, it's Friday night. It's almost Friday. <laughs> but um, yeah, they've got a way to swap uh, a new native Dex getting released, which has a lot of great kind of innovations. It's not just like a regular fifty fifty deck. So I'd, I'd definitely go and check that out. And size being. Dan, you noticed yesterday there was a lot of like liquidity getting put in and pulled out of of Psy, and uh, we kind of went through why that is. But I don't know what you kind of saw to actually bring that up in the first place. Uh, it's very freaking annoying. Whatever is going on with the price of PSI, Psy, whatever you want to call it, it is doing my absolute tits in. And I actually quite like this as a project. The Discord though is like <laughs> it is. Like everybody's like fighting their own bags for entry. I'm like, bro, what are you even talking about, man? Like, bro, are you stupid? Like, they're like, oh, uh, they're talking about like, oh, going to two bucks, going to two bucks. But then everybody like copies and passes. I was like, mate, this is not Telegram, <laughs> mate. You cannot do this in Discord. It doesn't work. I'm trying to shilly for a hundred milli, and you're just like fighting me out of my own shillies. What the <laughs> hell? No, on it. I think it's it's probably got to do with like the fact that they're. Looking again, exchange listings. Obviously, the the gate I O gate gate I O ones uh, come in. So I'm not sure if it's a, a bunch of just um, like volume washing to like boost the numbers. But I think long term, this is going to be quite a smart play. I I don't think it is. It, I, well, I know for my fact it isn't volume washing. Um, Ignore the me. Gate I, the gate I O one is like if you watch our interview with monolith from trident which was a couple of weeks back that's on youtube so we'll try and tag that so it pops up at the end if anyone's interested um basically what he said is um with the initial funds raised there's no way they're gonna go and pay for exchange listings they said they're a small relatively small team they're gonna just bootstrap the hell out of the treasury um and if people want to list them then that's going to come at their own kind of time and cost expense it's not coming at the expense of the treasury um and what what's great is when you become just completely undeniable those kind of uh exchanges that want you to list the token once because a lot of them 
a lot of how this will happen, right, is that they want an all like they'll want a lot a large portion of the tokens at launch, or market makers will want a lot a large portion of tokens at launch. So let's say like market maker comes in and we'll use size as an example. Um, right, we want two or three percent of the supply at one dollar, and then we'll market make your token. But at the end of like our contract, we'll have the option to purchase all the tokens out outright at the initial agreed upon price. So they're incentivized to kind of drive price as high as physically possible and make markets because they know they've effectively got a call option at the end of the contract to purchase those tokens outright. Um, similar sort of thing which happened at Stargate originally where, um, not originally, a couple, a couple of weeks back where they effectively said, we're going to, incentivize market makers on centralized exchanges at the price of like was it 170 180 or something like that so market makers are incentivized to come in effectively get a call option at 180 uh, and whatever they can kind of push price or buy price or like um absorb kind of sell pressure to co make the continue the token price continue upwards or even stick in a range so they can add fees on both sides of spread um they're incentivized to do so because they've got a, like effectively got a, a call option at the end of the contract where they can purchase the underlying tokens for a, a set price. So, um, but yeah, they they definitely won't be doing that. That's for two reasons. One, well, three reasons. I know that <laughs> I know for a fact they're not doing it from behind scenes and speaking to them. Two, then they're not going to they're not going to pay for exchange listings whatsoever. If people want to list them, then go ahead, go and do it. You're going to have to buy the tokens on the open market like we've seen with the gate IO one. And three, they haven't leased their own decks. So they're not going to rent, they're not going to rinse a lot of funds and fees through uh, Uniswap when it's effectively a community LP because they haven't actually released the, the full LP yet on their own decks. So three reasons why that isn't happening, but definitely something to pay attention to. I think we pulled up the transactions, didn't we, Dan? There was like a couple of, mm -hmm. like some, some really large liquidity deposits and withdrawals but they're all coming in a block or two after each other so I, I think it's because liquidity is relatively low it's on univ3 and people are using kind of just in time liquidity um mev there to try and like snipe liquidity at a specific price and get their help their liquidity in at a specific price then remove liquidity in the next block and take up the line share of the trading fee so um and also liquidity is relatively low so, um, and I also think people are re removing liquidity to then go and deploy the liquidity on Oasis Swap, where they're going to be earning a couple of uh, the new ink fees and things like that as well. So, interesting one. Keep an eye on it. Um, if you miss magic, then this might be your second chance. Is it too early to talk about ink and Oasis Swap? Yeah, I want to see it first. I mean, I know the, the dynamics of it, but I want to kind of see it and we can bring it up on stream and stuff like that. But um, be interested to see how that plays out. All right, let's do that next week. Nice. Uh, any, so I suppose off the back of our Coinbase and um, optimism discussion, it seems like we've already pulled up the optimism chart, which seems like it's going to continue running. It was at $3 a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> now it's at three twelve. So I think that'll break all time high over the weekend. Velo, obviously one of the kind of blue chips on that. Um, it's just continuing to grind higher. Higher, I mean, it's it's tapped out there, nearly twenty six cents, and yeah, thirty eight million market cap. So keep an eye on that as well. Any other charts? Oh, oh there is one. What is there is one more chart? If I can put my bags, which has been performing extremely well. It looked quite wobbly at one point, didn't it? Sort of like, and then it's just really done well over the last month. Yeah. Um, dude, that's a super wibbly wobbly chart. Like, there is, is no, like, structure to that. It's just like, bup, 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 whoop, fall off a cliff. Oh, no, we, we like this again. Whoop, fall off a cliff. No, oh, we really like this. Oh, fall this off a cliff. Massive but this red chart, But this chart is very, very reflective of where the market is right now i mean it's just it really is schizophrenic in every sense of the word i mean markets are schizophrenic by their very nature but this one is just i think the best reflection of what's been happening especially over the last month i mean you look at arbitrum charts at the moment yeah this is how do you hang on to that you know like at that low of 
and not sell you've it just, and run for the hills. You've just got you've just got to understand that the second and third order effects of Shanghai and its effect on exchanges that can effectively provide a good marketplace for good staking derivatives, and then also balancer balancer is a DEX that is beginning to get some real traction and some real great innovation happening there. And if you're comparing the two, I suppose Balancer is curved to where Aura is to Convex. And Convex is slowly running out of emissions to just start, like, to kind of incentivize people. And there is, like, I don't know if it's a soft or hard cap, but those emissions, I don't know how they're going to kind of pull it off. I'm sure they have a couple of tricks up the sleeve to kind of get around that, but if there isn't incentives for people to lock the CRV with convex, then I don't know. I think balancer and aura can definitely, well, more aura than balancer, but aura can certainly come into play that. So I've just kind of got my eyes on, on this um, as like a medium long-term kind of position. So even if it is fucking volatile and like, what's the liquidity on it? 12.3 million liquidity. So like, it's where you just start seeing world games. People can enter like sizable, well, like sizable positions for on chain, but volumes picking up. People are paying attention. Um, and I think it'll just continue upwards, really. And I think, I think like a, an extremely large portion of the supply is, is locked for the sixteen week um, vote lock as well. So it takes a lot off the market. From a liquid staking derivatives perspective, we did publish a long form article for whoever's interested and is coming coming into this whole narrative at this point, just know based on the spaces talk that we had um, this morning with the Gearbox and the Lido crew that this liquid staking derivative narrative is not over. In fact, in many ways, it's just beginning. I mean, I'm only really starting to get my head around it of recent. And I think that, you know, it's not really something that's going to go away because of Shanghai. I think it's something that's going to persist and I believe the guys when they say that. I don't think they're saying it for the sake of, you know, pumping their bags or their protocol or, you know, that case. I think there's definitely, you know, a case for 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 LSDs and how they will continue to play a very important role in in DeFi and in crypto in general. And I think that, you know, I'm starting to to look at it a lot more closely. I mean, there is only so much time in a day. Um, Grant, in terms of you know, future players around LSD, you know, kind of not not wanting you to go out on a limb here, but I mean, what do you think like the prospects are for, you know, the next three, six to 12 months within the LSD space? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I even like just the LDO and Rocket Pool tokens as, as your base exposure to it, because what Carvas from Lido was saying on that space is that we've just released it's pinned to my profile if anyone wants to listen to it but we'll um we'll pull it down and put it on YouTube and Spotify in, in a couple of days but what he was saying is because when you stake Ethereum currently even through Lido um because if Sh- Shanghai isn't live yet you can't just go and unstake those that ETH so what that does is when you stake with um Lido or Rockpool whoever, whoever whatever liquid staking provider you're given um uh, liquid staking token, which is in the form of stake teeth, with, with if we're sticking with the the Lido analogy, that staked ETH is technically supposed to be one to one. So how do you keep it an asset one to one to its peg? You have to incentivize an extremely deep set of liquidity, and that's being currently done on Curve and through Convex and Aave and places like that where. The staked ETH and ETH liquidity pool for people to trade in and out of um, has to be as deep as physically possible because if someone someone wants to exit the staked ETH position, they can't just they can't just withdraw it from the beacon chain effectively. They have to go and sell it on the open market. And the places that house that are obviously Curve and Uniswap and Balancer can start getting a real big uptick as well, which is I'll speak about that in a minute. But um, so. How do you incentivize really deep liquidity? You pay people. It's just, it's pay to play, isn't it? So for the past like 18 months or whatever, Lido, Rockpool and whoever else in the liquid staking market have been incentivizing liquidity by giving staked ETH and ETH or Rockpool ETH, ETH liquidity providers additional rewards in the Lido token or the respective Rockpool token. So 
what Carbas was saying is that's great and it's a great kind of bootstrap mechanism and also to kind of incentivize deep liquidity and also to distribute tokens evenly across whoever wants to keep them. But when withdrawals go live following Shanghai, obviously it's going to be a, a little bit slow at first and like works on the whole principle of like a queue system. But because people will actually be able to redeem one-to-one through their liquid staking provider and not have to sell on Curve or on Uniswap or on Balancer, um, what that does is Rockapool, Lido and all the others can take their foot off the gas with regards to emissions. So you're going to see a much greater drop-off in how many additional tokens come onto the market from these tokens. So kind of factor that into your whole thesis around how the rest of the year will play out. But if they've been if they've been paying out a shit ton of tokens every every two weeks on curve bribes and, and gauges and balancer and uniswap and shit like well not uniswap but um and all that kind of shit. But so there's gonna be a huge drop off in emissions. It's already started to dwindle drastically um because people will actually be able to redeem one to one. Um so that's something to keep an eye on. Um I think second and third order effects, I think the Staked ETH, ETH, and Rockpool ETH, ETH liquidity pools on Balancer, UniV3, potentially through Arrakis. Tapioca are going to have staked ETH and Rockpool ETH lending and borrowing markets. Gearbox effectively being able to leverage um, even those LP positions that I've just talked about as well. So all these protocols that can tap into that. And they also get the added safety of knowing that if Stake the ETH does depeg on the DEX, they can actually just buy it and redeem it for the ETH because because Shanghai will be live and withdrawals will be open as well. So it becomes a real good arbitrage opportunity, which will get gobbled up as, as soon as physically possible, I can imagine, because it's fully redeemable for the underlying ETH. Um, so it just, it just bakes in... Uh, what people might see as medium risk now, I think it just drops down that that kind of that level to, to kind of lower risk as well. So, and anyone who can benefit off the back of that, all the protocols that provide stake ETH and RE in as like a composable layer on the protocol, I think they'll benefit massively as well. So, I hope that wasn't too much of a ramble. Um, I mean, I think essentially what you've just done now is that you've you've summarized in many ways probably five narratives that are currently underway in the DeFi context um, and all the pretty much all the big players that are contributing to that. So thank you very much for that history and future lesson, sir. Um, I think I think in many ways, like the way that I perceive it and how I make sense of it, kind of like in my mind, is that this is almost like a level two CVX, CVR, uh, you know, kind of like CVX dynamic um you know around how you can create you know this annuity income play you know obviously it's a different mechanism but it's it's kind of like you know tweaks the same kind of principles around it and it's going to be really interesting to see in fact fascinating to see how it plays out after shanghai and how people manage to capture that liquidity and make it work for them post that event um you know will it be a huge sell off will it be just more of the same or will it be more of the same, you know, kind of like looped out, um, you know, kind of gearbox style? I mean, it's really interesting to see what those guys are doing as well. Um, so thanks for that. All right. Any final thoughts? Uh, just final thoughts. Just interesting to see what's played out over this last week with, with Arbitrum public sales. Wasn't impressed with Trove, but then that's just markets, you know, like the guys made an absolute killing in their raise. I think they made 8 million. We've got Factor Da that their raise finishes in eight hours from now. I think they're probably going to finish out at close to 7 million. You know, like people have bought in this public sale, uncapped. I'm not sure whether I like the uncapped principle, but these projects will now have a tremendous amount of capital to, you know, brood and hatch and do, you know, what they need to do to bring these projects to fruition. Great for them from an investor perspective. I think it's more a case of just being really patient and not releasing your bags below public sale because I think that's what happened with Trove. Very good chance it happens with Factor as well. You know, people are kind of looking at the opportunity cost and saying it's not worth hanging on to this. I'll take a 25% bath 
and I'll just go from there. Trove, but if you look at the chart, I think it's going to take months to recover, maybe even longer. Um, yeah. I mean, that you know, like it really is a sorry case for what should have been a really good launch and it just really doesn't reflect well, in my opinion, you know, kind of like in the medi short to medium term. A um, lot of lessons here for projects, you know, for projects that want to do this. Um, personally, after having seen this, there's no ways I would take this route. Absolutely not. Um, because I think it just dilutes what it is that your intention is and what you want to do. Um, sure, you make a whole lot of money, but that's as far as it goes. You know, like how long is it going to take you to convince everyone that your project is actually worthy after looking at a chart like this? Yeah. Yeah. Because if everyone's had the chance to buy in public sale, who's left to buy it? Uh, yeah, public sale, who's left to buy on the open market? Correct. Well, I suppose that, that, I suppose. I suppose it's just a free market, though, isn't it? Like the, someone, someone's going to step in at one point and decide, yeah, that's fair game. And if that, it'll probably be kind of like, um, I, I, just based on this, right? These numbers are correct. Um, I'd probably say you could use like the whole RFV meme. Of how much did they raise? Seven. I think it was eight for them. No, but yeah, the raise for the team was eight million. Right. Well, this has got a lot further to drop then. Just based on market yes. cap to how much they've raised, because they haven't got a product. Because they haven't got a product yet. Hmm. I think that's so. a fair assessment. So that was my like. That's been kind of the thing for me this week. Is is like, you know, where is the the sweet spot for projects that are doing this kind of thing? And you know, I'm still working through it. I, I think I'll write something about it uh, in the next week. You know, like where where is the sweet spot for projects in terms of where what they want to raise and how much they need to raise. Um, and then what is it that they commit to their investors in that process? And, and I see this as being detrimental to investors, personally. I don't think this is a good thing. No, you've got to cap it. Got to like cap it. The game, game theory it. It's just to make any sense. I'll come um, back to, I'll come back to one final thought. The most successful, the most successful public sale I've ever seen was the redacted cartel one. I mean, obviously, it doesn't surprise us. It was an auction that was it was diminishing on on what it is. They raised CVX, CVR. They're still in business. There's a reason why they're still in business. And they were an own fork, by the way. And they just, I mean, those guys are brilliant. They've changed the game. I don't have a bag, by the way, so I'm not trying to pump my bags here. It's just, I'm just observing, and it's just like, wow. You know, like, that's the way it's done. Yeah, they're a big player in the whole... Uh, of course, Shanghai stadium. world as well. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it looks great. Chad's fucking fantastic. To be fair, nearly four acts off yeah. the bottom. But um, Dan, any final thoughts, or should we wrap it up? I'm just going to say, still keep an eye on uh, what's going on in 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 the real world in, in trad fight in the news, um, because it, it always transfers straight over. So, still keep an eye on the S and P. Still keep an eye on the Nasdaq. Still keep an eye on. Uh, the HSI, which is the basically the, the Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong index as well. So then you can kind of like get a scope of what's going on in the real world to, to then make a judgment on what's going on here. Euphoria in TradFi creates euphoria in, in crypto. Now I sell my hands throughout most of that little bull run there to like negate the FOMO and it's going to pay off dividendly because now everything's coming down. It'll all get oversold and then it will go back up again. So I'm waiting, me personally, I'm watching TradFi. So don't make All a right. Good call, sir. All right. Like plenty, of good, plenty of good interviews. Lots of good stuff in the newsletter coming out next week. Uh, lots of good articles on the website. You can find all that below. Please just do us a favor. Hit like or subscribe. Preferably subscribe on the YouTube as well. Um, we're nearly hitting 4,000 on there as well. So we're in a bit of a race between the newsletter and... Um, uh, YouTube to see who's going to hit 4,000 first but if you could do that um, that'd be great as I say it's all free you don't have to do anything apart from just press that thing if you want to put notifications on that also would be great but yeah I suppose um, keep an eye out next week there's an interview with Infinity Pools which is going to change the game so keep an eye out for that um, yeah I think that's it so see you next week yeah, we've also got we've got a bunch of other interviews coming as well. Some really cool projects coming to light. Just keep an eye. That's why you want to subscribe. 
you know, we, we put timestamps in there so you don't have to watch the whole thing if we bore you. But if you want to get to the sweet, the sweet bits, uh, the timestamps are there for a reason. So like, subscribe. Have a good weekend, everyone. See you next week.